So you've received a semen analysis report and it says there's zero sperm. But when you actually look at the report in a little more detail, you actually are able to identify a notation that says one to two non-motile sperm per HPF. That means per high powered field, a very small area on the slide that was examined. What does this mean? What is this report telling you? Your, doc Your doctor may have told you there's no sperm and you need to have surgery to get sperm. What is exactly going on? How do you interpret this sort of result? This is an area that many reproductive endocrinologists, even though they're infertility experts, really don't understand what that report means. So when a semen analysis is done, the fluid is looked at, it's examined under the microscope to see how many sperm are there. If there are no sperm seen, then the technician will go ahead and centrifuge, meaning try to concentrate any cells that are present in that fluid into a very small volume and then re-examine it. So it turns out when they concentrate the fluid down, they usually concentrate it to a volume like this, which is about 300 to 400 microliters. That may not look like much, but what's being analyzed from that sample is only one drop. That may be five or 10 microliters. It's a small proportion of what's actually present in the entire sample. So if you see a few sperm, particularly a few moving sperm, those sperm are likely to be enough to inject almost all of the eggs that you may have in an in vitro fertilization cycle. So how do you get more information? You've been told you'd need to have surgery to get sperm, but how can you make the most of what's actually in the ejaculate? We have a lot of experience with men who require surgery, who truly have zero sperm in the ejaculate. And even if prior semen samples showed zero sperm, we find sperm on another sample analyzed on the day of planned surgery in eight or nine percent of those men. It requires a team that is dedicated to look for very rare sperm and do the most to actually work with that. If you identify motile sperm, those sperm can be injected into each of your eggs and used. So how can you get more information? To start with, doing an extended sperm preparation, meaning out of this volume of fluid that is present in the centrifuge specimen, looking at more than one drop is important. That's an ESP or extended sperm prep. You may look at 10, 15, 16 of those micro droplets to see if any sperm are present, that gives you much more information on what's actually present in the sample than writing it off as having inadequate sperm based on looking at one tiny micro drop. So an ESP or extended sperm prep provides a lot of information about where you stand. What about practically during an IVF cycle? Should you have surgery beforehand to get sperm? Not if there's a chance that sperm could be, could be present. We will never proceed to surgery without doing a semen analysis on the day of that planned surgery and be absolutely sure that there's no other sperm to work with. What if you see a couple of rare sperm on the day that that surgery is planned? Well, then we have men provide two, three, sometimes four total samples because men with low sperm production will continue to have sperm in the ejaculate in multiple samples, even within a few hours of abstinence. That may be different from what your IVF doctor told you to do, but it's a reliable observation that we have for men with small numbers of sperm in the ejaculate to be able to actually use those samples and make the most of them. So what can you learn? 
First of all, a standard semen analysis when there's rare sperm present may not accurately quantitate the number of sperm that are present. Secondly, repeat semen analyses are valuable when there's rare sperm present because you'll often see more sperm and of better quality. Third, best centers will actually use a semen analysis on the day of surgery and not commit you to surgery separate from an IVF cycle. That may end up being an unnecessary operation that may take you months to recover from and in the end be truly unnecessary. The best centers are able to coordinate together in vitro fertilization with the potential for surgery. They'll have a coordinated team where the reproductive and uh, urologists work very closely with the IVF team and the laboratory to make the most of what you have and give you the best chance of success in your fertility attempt in an IVF cycle. I'm Dr. Peter Schlegel. I'm a urology expert in New York who cares for men with severe male factor infertility. Here are the lessons we've reviewed.